every stone on this house came off of this farm. And this farm has approximately 500 acres. Um, look at the differences in these stones. And uh, uh, Tom, you can attest to the fact that the native stone under the soil doesn't resemble these stones. So I, I feel certain that during the Ice Age, the glaciers that moved down across North America that brought the stuff down and somewhat tumbled it, stopped along here from Middleburg to Markham and deposited these rocks. And these are rocks right off the, right off the farm. I had a, a friend come up here who has the avocation of um, whatever they call it, people that work with rocks and stones. Uh, not, not a gemologist, but Geology. anyway, that's his avocation. And he came up here on a social visit and he looked at the house and he said, you have a house made out of gemstones. I said, what are you talking about? He said, look, he said, see, see that rock right there? That's unikite. That is the state precious stone. It's not real precious, but for Virginia, that's the, that's the, the, the state stone. And that's uh, uh, unikite. If you polish that, it's absolutely, I mean, you can make jewelry out of it. Uh, and they're all over this house. I hope nobody sees this and comes to pick my rock. <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that stone, isn't it, isn't it pretty? And of course, that's, it's not just those stones, it's all, whole, whole lot of them. Uh, around front, there's an interesting rock. Now, notice, notice over the, over the front door, uh, what is that? That's a millstone. And the mill, the old mill used to be just about, oh, well, it's from here to the barn over there. What's it, what's that, Tom, about four football fields from yeah, here? Yeah. yeah, it was an old mill. And uh, it, it, it operated during the, like, 1700s. And it came out of, out of disuse, and so some of these rocks were in a pile already there at the mill uh -huh. uh, that went in this house. But the millstone came out of that out of that mill, so the mill's still here. <laughs> <laughs> My father built this house in 1925. What, what he right after he came back from the First World War, what he did was he went down to Washington D.C. when it was like uh, mostly consisted of the houses up in the northwest section, yeah. and he went down there and uh, looked at all these different houses and got his ideas and he came back and designed this house and built it the way he wanted. What he wanted was a stone house, but all the stone houses he ever saw had little small windows. And if you look inside this house, you can really appreciate the fact that this has big windows, open spaces, and a lot of light. It's a unique house. It's got the style of those houses uh, in, in Northwest Washington, some of them, but it's got openness. It's really nice. Um, he built it in 1925, approximately. Did he do the stone? A man, an old man from out of Paris. Oh goodness! Now my father would be real upset if I can't, I can't remember his name because I didn't know him personally. He was a stonemason, a real well-known stonemason at the time. He came over to do the stonework, and he brought an assistant. And my father, being quite the eager beaver of having his house built, and he was quite a craftsman on things anyway, he jumped in there and was assisting the stonemason too, and then he was laying a little of the stone as he watched. And <laughs> at the end of one day, the, the guy wanted to let, he couldn't stand his helper, but he wanted, wanted to hire my father. <laughs> and my father ended up doing himself personally a lot of this house just because he enjoyed it and he was good at it mm -hmm. and the stonemason said told him that he was as good as he was by the time they got done anyway that's uh but you know this is the new house on the block the new house on the block the house over there that the Dejeeves live in the old Edmonds house was built in seven in the mid 1700s that house right over there uh, was here before the war the, the, the houses down at Fleetwood were here before the war. That the, my, the house over at my barn was here before the war. 
What war? The war. The war between states. <laughs> what other war did we have here? <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, and by the way, it was the war between the states. I used to walk over to Old Man Chapel here. He was a historian. He was like, well, Nancy Baird's uncle or something. But he, I, I used to go over and see Old Man Chapel here. I was very impressionable about 12 years old. You and I were buddies at yeah. that time. And I'd walk over there and go in. I'd knock on the door and it's, oh, oh, Miss Sadie, you remember yeah, her? Yeah. She'd come to the door, you know, it's, gosh, it was spooky in there. <laughs> and, but Mr. Chapelier would see me coming, he'd just beam and come on in. And he'd take me in his den and you had to literally walk through the aisles of the newspapers. They were stacked and books, oh my goodness. And he sat me down in a chair and he said, young man, I'm, I'm a historian. I do the history research for the people that write the historical novels. And he said, I'm going to tell you some things. If you remember them, you'll get keep things straight. He said, the side that wins the war gets to write the history of the war. They don't always write it the same as if the other side, and yet it was the same event. He said, so you have to be careful what you're reading. And he said, there was never a civil war. Because if you look at how the country came together and you understand how the Constitution came about and how the states thought at the time and what they put together, they had a provision that the states could withdraw. Vermont had already tried it, uh, threatened to. Uh, so the, so the southern states actually became a country, a, a genuine country. A civil war is a war within a single nation between two parties vying for control of that single nation. That's not what happened here. Our country defended itself against their country. And I, I remember that. And everybody comes here and gets that talk when they come in the den. <laughs> Tom, I want to tell you about the, the, the dungeon. We take uh, hay rides around, and anytime we have any children on there, I, I say, well, you, you guys want to stop by the dungeon? And of course, I ask it early on. And then as we approach this old silo coming down that hill, I say, would well, y'all want to go by and see the, see the dungeon? And of course, they do. Now, when I was like eight, nine, 10 years old, I used to walk up here. And I used to look in this thing, and my little fertile imagination, <laughs> you know, kid's imagination, well, I used to imagine that this thing down here looked like a dungeon. Now look at it. Look down in it. Just look down in there. Doesn't that look like a dungeon? So I tell the kids, I say, well, I'm going to show you the dungeon. Now, I, I, I bring, them on, bring them over here and show them. I say, now, <clears throat> I don't really believe this, but it's been said that uh, there was a time when uh, families would bring a, a child that was being rebellious and naughty for a little attitude adjustment. They'd uh, let them cool off in here for a few days. And I said, uh, you see those bones right down there? Now, I, I, of course, I don't think it belongs to that child, but it's said that uh, things were so peaceful at home, they forgot he was, forgot him. <laughs> the, the bones right in there, they might be his. But I know no, no, none of you kids is that naughty, you know, so you don't have to worry about going in the dungeon. <laughs>